According to Lonely Planet, hiking Mount Kinabalu is the number one attraction that Malaysia has to offer. And the reasoning behind this is that it provides a great challenge and that the reward at the top is spectacular. Well, let's just say that I disagree. What's cracking, my fellow travelers? Today I'm going to be talking about Mount Kinabalu, or as I personally like to call it, 13,425 feet of disappointment. Now, for those of you watching in a country that hasn't landed a man on the moon yet, that's approximately 4,095 units of your vastly inferior measurement system, but I digress. Let me start off by saying that Mount Kinabalu is very, very accessible. And depending on who you are, this could be seen as either a good or a bad thing. Looking for a nice, quick outing in nature that's easy enough for the whole family? Great, Mount Kinabalu has got you covered. On the other hand, if you're like me and looking for something a little more challenging where you can enjoy the peace and quiet nature has to offer, well, it's probably not gonna be your cup of tea. Like, when I started passing people in their 60s and entire families, I realized that summoning Mount Kinabalu was gonna be a cakewalk for a 20-something like me. And as long as you don't have any serious problems with the altitude, you'll find that getting to the top is as easy as just, well, walking. And that was a total bummer for me because one of the major things that I look for in activities out in nature is a way to challenge myself. And uh, boy oh boy does Mount K fall short in this department. And to make things worse, this hike is just super congested. I know I just said that challenge is the number one thing that I look for in outdoor activities, but the second most important thing I'm looking for is some peace and quiet. And with the absurd amount of foot traffic here, well, that's just not gonna happen because there's way too many people and I don't like it. Finally, the third category where Mount Kinabalu seriously drops the ball is in pricing. One of the most insulting things about this trek is that you have to pay for a guide in order to get access to the mountain, which would be fine if it was a complicated trek, but here's the thing, there's only one path. You're simply walking from point A to point B. It is literally impossible to get lost on this thing. And as far as the guides go themselves, they don't really bring anything to the table. Don't expect any fun facts or trivia or anything like that. And in my case, I was actually in better shape than my guide, so I was basically paying just so some tiny Asian woman could follow me up the mountain. And if that sounds like a giant waste of money, well, it's because it was. While I'm on the subject of wasting money, I might as well talk about the world's highest Via Ferrata that Mount Kinablu has to offer. Now to be fair, the experience of climbing down the side of a mountain and soaking in the views is pretty enjoyable. Unfortunately, that doesn't really justify the absolutely absurd price tag attached to this activity. Like, I still get mad at myself when I think about how much I spent on this shit. Especially now that I've had time to reflect on the experience and traveled to other countries that offer exceptionally better hikes for just a fraction of the price, I can say with 100% confidence that Mount Kinabalu just simply fails to deliver. To recap, if you're looking for a challenge, then this isn't the place for you. Strike one. If you enjoy going out in nature because it's one of the few places where you can find some peace and quiet, then <laughs> you won't enjoy this. Strike two. And if you're maybe just looking for an activity that's fairly priced for what it has to offer, then pff, ugh, you really won't enjoy this. Strike three. So that's strike one, two, three, and you're out of here, Mount Cannon Blue. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200, and for the love of God, people, do not add this place to your itinerary, because it's just not worth it. In other words, you don't need to worry about losing any sleep if you give Mount Kinabalu a pass. In fact, I would advise that you avoid it like the plague, because when it comes down to it, there are just way better places for you to spend your time and money in Malaysia. For one, Taman Nagara has way more nature for you to explore, and apparently Sipadan has some of the best diving in the world, but I wouldn't know, because I cut it from my itinerary so I could go hike Mount Kinabalu. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but I'm still a little bitter about it. Well, that's going to do it for me today, guys. And until next time, remember, don't blindly follow the advice of guidebooks. It didn't work out very well for me. Okay? Bye now.